Hey, yo. Hi. All right, so let me explain right quick. So basically, um, first of all, oh, shut the fuck up. All right, so basically, first of all, I was, uh, I still don't get the whole um, history, uh, the trait of, of having the same history parts. But before all that, I'm under the impression, right, from what I know, and I, I have a limited knowledge on this. So, like, don't try to, like, quote me. Don't hold me or nothing I say. But from what I know, if, like, if it, isn't it true, like, if it violates a law, then that's, like, an unsound or, like, or not unsound. Yeah, like, it's, like, an unsound argument or something like that. Mm, I don't know. Feel no. free to educate me on that, but. No. So one thing that the NT tier can do um, is say, let's assume that the law of or the that let's assume that the law of identity is false. Does that break name the trait? And specifically, if we want to be very charitable to NTT, what we would have to say is, does let's assume the identity of indiscernibles is false. Because the identity of indiscernibles or Leibniz's law is a little bit contentious, actually. And then they would ask you is, okay, let's assume it's false. What premise do you reject? And so if you wanted, we could start there. I can get someone with like that is able to type in the bot or show up the PDF. We could bring up the argument right now, and I'll just ask you, okay, I assume that the law of identity is false. Which premise is false? Wait, so you're saying that you think the what do you mean by the law of identity is false? Yeah, 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 but laws can be false. So, for example, I could say, like, there's the law of Kayla going to McDonald's, and the law is just that I go to McDonald's every day at noon. Um, one day I go to McDonald's at three o'clock. The law is false. So laws can be false because laws, <laughs> we're starting to get into, like, ontology of laws, and I don't want to go too deep down that, but Laws are just something that we're using to describe a tendency. And the idea is that they should be a tendency always, but what it would mean for a law to be false is just that it's not always the case. So it's the case, but something else can cause it to be otherwise, and that would be the new law. And so what one could say, and let me know if at any point you have any questions, what one could say is it is coherent, or at least possible, that there really are two objects that have all the same properties. We could just hold that to be true. And I'm not using this in a nominal sense. I'm saying there really are two objects. And then the person running NTT could just say, I've granted you that. Now, which premise of NTT is false? Wait, 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 wait. So wait, repeat, repeat what you just said, like the last two things. Yeah, so, so they could just grant you the conclusion of your argument and then ask you how it makes NTT false. So the conclusion as in, um, if all traits are equalized, it violates uh, Leibniz law? Yeah, so you, I can just grant you that. I can say, yeah, okay. What do you mean by that. break yeah. NTT? What does that mean? What do you mean like break? Uh, yeah, so either the argument wouldn't be valid or it wouldn't be sound. We could go with either. I think that sound okay. is probably the better well, way to like go. I said, you could show, you could, you could either show me how it's invalid or you could show me how one of the premises is false. Oh, okay, well, like I said, I thought it was just like if you if you violate, I thought this was like one of the like, uh, like fundamental phil philosophy laws or whatever. So like, I thought if you violate a law, it's well, like automatic. It's like you can just discard <laughs> it or whatever. Well, fun funnily enough, Leibniz's law is contestable. Um, the, really, the reason I, I don't want to go too deep into ontology here because that wasn't the purpose of this debate. But in set theory, there's a variety of axioms. And the axiom of choice, um, which I'm not going to describe at this point because I don't want to get too deep into set theory because it's not what people are here are for, but the axiom of choice is required for the identity of indiscernibles to be true. And so there actually was a period okay. where the identity of indiscernibles was taken to be false. The, again, the only thing that laws are, are us describing something that seems to always be true. But we can have, we can have counterexamples of laws uh, own, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, right wait, like wait. like for like for example the law of gravity right the law of gravity doesn't hold in black holes and so to fix that we're developing things like quantum loop gravity or string theory or whatever like laws are laws are just with respect to either our empirical evaluations or in the cases of um logic they tend to be with respect to our rationalization 
But okay, well, my whole argument was based around it violating litmus law. So if you're sure. going to tell me that violating it doesn't really mean that much, then I'm just I, I'm just like well, at, I, well, I'm at, I'm at the start line again. Well, I mean? well, yeah. So let me just say like we can I can say it. Do, I, I don't even have to say it doesn't mean much. One thing I could just say is, oh, that's interesting that it violates that. Could you now prove how NTT is false? I mean, so, I haven't even. Seen, what do you mean by NTT is false? Because I haven't even seen the actual like syllogism for NTT. Like NTT is like, yeah. a set of questions. Wait, does the NTT it's a consistency test? Oh no, like, no, no, no. NTT, NTT. There is a. Um, one second. I'm just gonna pull up the argument for us real quickly. Oh fuck. Um, the so there is a natural language version, and you've probably seen that one because they like to use the natural language version to make this argument. But the problem is, is that ask yourself and other philosophers uh, that he credits in this have formalized it. And so you actually do have to deal with, does someone have like an image version of it? It's in like the form of a PDF, which sucks. Um, if someone can just post the syllogism, that would be wonderful. Wait, post in a... Yeah, I'm just getting someone to post the yes, argument. Yes. Okay, ask yourself is clarifying that he does not see himself as a philosopher, but in, in this, that so so NTT has been. The no, 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 no. There's, okay, yeah. So there, you see that yellow box? That is a that is NTT in premise and conclusion format. <laughs> and so, and so, and so, what I'm going to do is one second. I'll just add in a P three. Okay, so now I've added P3, and what I want you to do is take P1, P2, C, and P... Uh, or I want you to take P1, P2, and P3, and I want you to show me either a contradiction or some kind of falsehood that causes C to be untrue. So if you can show me a contradiction, then the argument obviously um, won't be tenable. Or you could show me um, the fact that C no longer follows from P1 and P2, which is just to say that I want you to demonstrate that it's either invalid or unsound. I hold on. This shit long as hell. Yeah, I mean, fucked up. One sec. Let me just read it. Sure. Wait, what does it mean that then your view can only deny the given non-human animal has moral value on pain of P and negation P? What does that mean? Well, what that what that means, so this is, in some of the cases, it's good that you're asking questions rather than just hopping to conclusions. I like that. Um, but what that specific sentence means is that you can only say that non-humans don't have value if you are willing to affirm a contradiction. So when we say on pain of, that means that it's a consequence we'd like to avoid. Um, oh yeah, 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 I get yeah, I, that's just, yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just a it's just a more structural way to say that if you are firm that the animal doesn't have moral value, then what you're doing is giving a contradiction. If the antecedent clause is correct. Okay, uh, P two, your view affirms a given human is trait equalizable. Uh, to give it while retaining more value. Uh, so therefore, you can only okay. So that's just that's just that's just modus ponens, right? Yeah, it's just a modus ponens. Okay, so um, well, yeah, well, like I said, I, don't, I think it's kind of useless for me to just consider all three premises because I already because I, I was just under the impression that just having a premise that says it breaks a law, I thought that like, that in itself is just like is just like bad. I mean, if obviously if you just compare the three premises together, it doesn't like there is no well, logical reason you can't have C. Well, right now, all I'm doing is sort of a cheap move, which is just to ask you why it matters. Because um, ask yourself response, and what I think works is just to say that the argument doesn't care about Leibniz's law; it's actually just agnostic to it. So, basically. Whether Leibniz's law is true or false, 
actually just doesn't even matter. But what I could do is if you want to continue the discussion is I could grant you that it does matter. And then what I would do is ask you to prove that your conclusion follows. But I think that so far you haven't even demonstrated that it does matter and that's kind of problematic. Okay, I see. Um, well, yeah, I can't prove it does matter. I don't have the knowledge to prove that it does matter. Right, right. But don't you think that maybe that's an important feature of your argument that you prove that it matters? Like you can't, like I, like I could, I could make up a syllogism right now and I could have the conclusion of the syllogism. You know, I could, I could really affirm anything I want. <laughs> I could come to the conclusion like, you know, NTT is going to lead to like, some absurdity or your view leads to some absurdity yeah i mean i have to look I, I could i could be i could be a memer and i could like i could run like presuppositionalism on you and i could like show you how you have like no foundation in your view the point is is that within the scope of what we're talking about um what about this argument is wrong if it's the case that it breaks Leibniz's law but that's going to be an important feature and so one way we could think about it is we could look at okay well what happens um in that in that uh in the conclusion where we're talking about contradiction like what would a contradiction mean if Leibniz's law um was false and what that would mean is that there's really there really are two objects so they're not just nominal features there really is two objects at the exact same like point in space time whatever dimensions every everything is Physi right, everything right, is right. physically everything is physically true of two things and the problem is is even if we get to that point um just as an intuition pump it's gonna seem nonsensical to say that there are two different moral values there because the only way in which we can seem to say that there are two different moral values is by saying there's some kind of like nominal different value and so we're really evacuating our moral judgments because it seems like we would be baseless in one of those moral judgments or contradictory because it seems like what you're saying is is that the nominal feature matters and that's what causes moral value which seems insane it's like saying just the fact that i'm looking at this thing and then comparing it to another thing is the reason there's moral value differences or alternatively what you're saying is is that i just arbitrarily assign moral values to these things because since all the properties are the same there isn't any principled or pragmatic reason for why i could give them different moral values right exactly but, but i'm saying what you're saying that's exactly what i'm saying i'm saying that because of that someone can uh you know decide to so let's say you have a human you're equalizing it to whatever animal then someone could just you know uh once it's like once it's over forget about all the nominal shit they could just say okay i hold the same judgment towards both of these objects and that would be totally cool right if if they hold the same judgment towards both these objects, then if they did that, that would just mean that at some point the trait is swiped. Like there, there wouldn't, there, I don't know what you're saying there. If you're saying that at the end of NTT, they hold the same value, that means that you've named a trait. Wait, no. You, you name a trait to justify not having the same judgment. Right. And so uh, maybe I'm confused. I thought what you said was what they could say is that the two objects have um, the same moral value. Yeah, no, I said, I said, no, no, no. I said from the perspective of someone who, who you're like trying to run, name the trade against, they, they could, you know, they could say, Wait, wait, I'm sorry, wait. No, yeah, so they could just say, they could say that they hold the same value towards two things after they've been fully equalized, right? And then that would be okay. That would Yeah, be they they, right. cer they yeah, they certainly they certainly could do that, but th th all that's going to mean is that you named a trait. Because at some point in this, and at some point if the moral value swaps to being identical, that means that you've named the trait. Oh, okay, yeah, because they started off with having different values. Right, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if we were trait equalizing two things that had the same value, that would just be like a like exercise in futility. The idea is that they're two different values. And it, um, as we do... So this is, this is another thing, too. I'm going to say this as an aside, that this kind of argument, um, even if it were problematic, that the ultimate end 
of a trade equalization resulted in some kind of like huge metaphysical problem, all it is really doing is dodging the point of the argument. Because the point of the argument is that we work iteratively and we look from trait to trait and we figure out whether or not that trait seems to have relevance uh, to our moral judgment of that thing, whether we perceive that thing to have value or not. Um, we can take groups of traits and their relations to one another. That's fine too. The idea is just that what we're looking for is what is it that causes our moral value to be different between these two objects? And so really when you're giving these kinds of objections where you're saying <laughs> causes like this huge like metaphysical notion that I don't want to accept, you're dodging the point of the argument. And in fact, multiple people, including Shadow Starshine um, and Perspective and Dave the Dastard have agreed that there is a rewording of the argument that seems to work just fine in their view. Uh, I don't think that Ask Yourself agrees to some of the rewording because it seems to um, it, it seems to make it open to other kinds of attacks. But there's a clear intention of the argument that's just sort of being dodged if you go this route. Right. Okay. I get you. I mean, I, all all I came in was trying to prove it, it violates the law. But then yeah, but I, like, yeah, so basically, yeah, but I can I can just grant you that, and then and then what's the problem? Well, no, there is no problem. Well, there yeah. is no problem. Yeah, but 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 uh, one thing too is I don't want us to totally go down the idea that I am just granting it to you. Um, if you understand that there's no problem, and if you understand that what they're doing is just sort of engaging in motivated reasoning against the argument, and that they're that people who do this seem to be sort of aware that what they're doing is motivated reasoning against the argument rather than engaging in what it is trying to do, which would be charitable then what we could do is we could get into the problems with the argument uh, that was presented in favor of it violating the law of identity. And the big thing that I saw very frequently, uh, his phone died. Uh, 